There it is. That took a moment. <laughs> oh, brother. Oh, my control panel just went missing. Oh, that's lovely. Uh, I may need to make some settings changes to make sure that that's okay. Well, actually, you know what? Let's do a quick little test here. Do, do, do. Two. make sure that we're actually online here. Let's make sure that we're actually online. Yep. Okay. We are the control panels just being a little funny. <sighs> oh, I could just hit refresh. Duh. <laughs> Yay, there we go. My data's back. Okay. Um, well that was kind of completely random, <laughs> so let me just switch over to Big Me today. There we are. Alrighty. Welcome back. We're doing some Swifty shenanigans again. Um, of course, naturally, we're also doing this on Windows. Um, big upgrades in that department, too, so... Hopefully we'll see much better performance when we're doing these sorts of things today. A um, little bit of cold start. Totally fine. I mean, I'm not expecting a whole lot of people to show up, considering... Um, oh, I want that back. Considering that... Oh, I don't think this actually ran the... Okay, whatever. Um... Considering that we're just doing more porting today, um, I'm not really expecting much in that department, so we will see how that goes. Um, that does remind me I need to put myself into presentation mode for the code editor, and I guess let's just jump straight into it. Kerploing. Once the camera decides it's relevant to... There we go. Okay, well that time I didn't actually have to worry about... Okay, cool. So I guess we just gotta wait for... The camera to disconnect and then reconnect to do the things. Cool. So, where were we? Yes, we were working on porting over our Charlotte library and we managed to get... The vector value done. Yay! Um, so now we're probably gonna have to dig into some more complicated bits, such as the boxes, probably. Um, as well as, let's see what else we have here. We have this movement one. This movement one I think we can knock out pretty easily. Um, and then we also do have the screen one that we need to work with as well. I think we'll actually do this one next, since that one's relatively straightforward to do. Um, cool. Source... Let's grab our screen.h, put it to the side here. We're going to go ahead and create a new file. We'll just kind of call this um, screen.swift. Make sure this is put on the right side. Um, likewise, let's go ahead and create our test cases for this. Screen test.swift. Now, this is where I need to fail to get compiler arguments for it. We didn't even compile yet, and you're already freaking out. Oi. <laughs> um, let's see, what do we need to do? We need to go to this test to pull our unit tests. Because we're just going to basically rewrite these. Um, 
anything else. So we can just do import xc test and then import charlotte. And then we just need to write out for what do we have for screen? I think it's just this, right? Yes. Um, fence inside. Okay, so this takes the vector and then, okay. I see. So final class, um, screen tests, XC test case. Okay. We're working, we're working. And so then we just need to write func test uh, fencing throws. Okay. Um, and then we're just going to say var let screen insets equal a screen inset, right? Or do we just want to do screen? Oh, these are the insets. Let uh, insets equal edge. Insets. Oh, hold up. Is this a actual... That might be a... No, the LSP is just being weird. As it always is. Top, four, left, eight, right, eight, bottom, four. We could probably simplify that down at some point in the future. Um, and then we're just going to say let screen equal a screen. Um, area. We have screen bounds, which I think screen bounds here, yeah, it is just a vector to x and then to 40, right? And then the insets to be our insets, like that. I'm also just going to hide the sidebar here real quick. Skipping that. Okay. <sighs> we got a lot of test cases to write. Let no clamped equal a vector to x 10 y 16 these are probably going to be interpreted as doubles, so let's let's do that. Um, and then let result equal. Uh, duh, duh, duh. I guess we just want to say screen dot fence. Screen fencing in point uh, no clamped. That's how we're going to write this. Uh, XCT assert equal result to be a vector to float Okay, that was weird x 10 y 10 like that well actually since these are broken up into their own test cases let's actually just do a uh, test fencing with uh, test fencing no transform and then what we're going to do, we're just going to take that and we're going to just move it up here, I think. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. Um, that way we can actually group these better. Um, funk test 
fencing top left corner throws uh, let result equal um, screen fencing in point vector to whoops <laughs> what am I doing there float zero and then we're just going to do an xct assert equal uh, our result to be a vector to float x h y four h four okay I think the keyboard's a little too clacky for this so I'm just going to disconnect the Surface Keyboard, bring back, oh yes, Vermilo Keyboard. This is the good shits. That means I can also angle this back up. Okay, yeah, so I think we're good there. Funk test fencing, um, top edge throws. Right, because we just want this one now. Um, let result equal screen fencing in point. Oh. What happened? Thank you. Vector two float x is sixteen. Y is one. I'm also going to just make a quick type alias here. Type alias point is vector two of float. So we can now just say point on these. Just makes my life a little bit easier. Also makes it a little bit easier to read. Okay. Um. XCT assert equal result point x 16y4 uh, funk test fencing top right corner throws okay um select so result equal screen fencing in point which is point x 400 y 1 xct assert equal result point x is 392 y will be 4 okay so that takes care of the um that takes care of all the top edge cases. Now we need to write our lefts and rights. Um, so funk test fencing uh, left edge throws. Let result equal screen fencing in point. Uh, is just zero forty. Okay, like this. XCT assert equal result 
followed by uh, point x, which is 8, and then y, which is 40. Um, now, the right edge is pretty much the same, except this time we're going to just change left to right. And we need to just change this point to 420, so that way this becomes 392. And then we just need to write the same thing for these, I think. Test bottom te ugh. fencing left bottom left corner throws. Okay, uh, let result equal screen fencing in point point which is what zero two forty like this and then equal result point x apply just gonna run it like that real quick just so that way I'm okay there. So this should be eight. This should be 236. Okie dokes. Funk. Test. Fencing. Bottom. Edge. Throws. Okay, let result equal screen. Fencing in point. Right, so x here is 16, y is 240. So we're now just going to make this result uh, point x sixteen y two thirty six, and then finally funk test fencing bottom right corner throws. Okay, let result equal screen. Fencing in point. So we just take the screen bounds, right? Yeah. Screen bounds. Okay, and then. result and then point x 392 y 236 Whew. that was a lot to write <laughs> that was a lot to write but that should cover our fencing test case here so that means we now have some information to work with, right? Uh, let me make sure. Did I import anything when we did the vector here? Just foundation. Okay. We could do that as well. Uh, import foundation. Now, that means we do know a few things. Um, so first, let's just write the struct edge insets here. Um, we'll make it public, um, public var top, uh, float, public var left, float, public var right, float, public var bottom, float. Now we're just going to need to make sure that we create the synthesizer ourselves. Because we have not, it is, 
It's what, 2024 and we still haven't figured out how to do this? Okay. We could add some fancy convenience initializers later. Because the main thing I want to work on here is we want to make our public struct. We called it screen here. In the Charlotte library, I believe we just called the screen data. Yeah, actually, you know what? Let's also call it screen data here. Data. And then here. Yes, okay. Um, also, yeah, let's do that as well. Public extension edge insets. Public. Alright, I think we could just say this. Let zero equal edge insets. Top zero, left zero, bottom zero, right zero. Right, okay, so now we need to say a public var bounds, which is a vector to float. And then we have a public var edge insets. And then that's where we're going to use the zero. public init bounds vector to float and then edge insets insets is zero. We'll actually remove the default value here. Self bounds is bounds I can't type. Okay. And self edge insets is edge insets. Like that. Now, we know that we created this method, uh, fencing in. So let's write that one as well, real quick. Fencing in point vector to float which will then return a vector to float. Now, I'm just going to be lazy. We're just going to have this return zero. It'll scream and be like, oh, you didn't use this. Um, that's not the point. The point is I want to make sure that this actually is testing, or the test will actually execute. Um, That was weird. Okay. So let's just... Fun? Um, I think WSL is having a mental breakdown. <laughs> um, I also probably want to edit the... Uh, config here because I set it to one let's maybe give it a little bit more juice to help um, just gonna make sure that if it wasn't already shut down it is shut down okay run code again yes as you can see the desktops no longer XPified uh, <laughs> And that is because um, I am running this on a Surface Pro. In fact, I can actually hold it up here and then switch the camera over real quick. It'll take a second to do its thing. There it is. Ta-da! Surface. The screen is blank because I purposely set this to second screen only. I like the green color. Nice stuff. Um, 
So we'll switch back to main. Camera will load whenever it decides it's convenient. Okay. Let's try running the tests again. I don't like the way that it does this sometimes. <sighs> right must proceed argument bottom. Oh, you're right. Also glad to see that we finally kicked in the LSP. I need to look for a better, um, I need to look for, like, a better extension that puts the tasks up there for me to run easily. Cannot use instance member within property initializer. Oh. Missing. Okay, so we have forgotten how to write tests correctly. Yeah, okay. Um, so this is the first problem. Actually, that might be the only problem. And the other stuff is just garbage. No, okay. Uh, extra arguments, insets, and call. We designed the initializer wrong. How about that? Cannot use instance member within property. Oh, right. Yeah, I forgot that was a thing. We'll do that. God, you can't do that in Swift. <laughs> okay. Uh, internal funk. It should be public. That's why. We are just uh, having a blast. Okay, screen tests. Yep, these are all the tests that failed. I think the only one that I... Actually, I don't think any of these succeed. Okay, that's intended. Great, we did a thing. <laughs> um... Oh, I guess I could have just gone here to do this, huh? No, I think it's confused. Yeah, no, it doesn't know what it's doing. Probably because we have this set up very strangely. Um, anyway. So, at least we have compiles. It compiles fine. Um, the only thing it doesn't like is that the tests are obviously failing. That's intended. Because um, we need to actually implement fencing in. Uh, okay, you're just being stupid. So now this is where we pull out screen.c. Wow. Okay. This is very simple code, <laughs> but I think we can actually simplify a lot of this. Um, so I think we could just say var new position is the point. Return point. 
Um, so we know that if fence.x is left than the edge insets, then it has to be the edge insets. Okay, so what that means is that the new position dot x must be the maximum between the edge insets, the, the left inset, and then what our new position is. And likewise, we got to repeat the same logic, I think, here. Yeah, so then new position dot x now becomes the minimum between um, our new position x. I mean, there's probably a fancier way to write this, but I am not thinking clearly. What are we trying to do? Ah, yes. Okay, so we're going to do bounds x minus the right edge insets. Why are you screaming? Cannot find new position, not positon. I don't know what a positon is. Um, so new position dot y now is the maximum between the edge, the top edge inset, and what our current position is. Um, and then we just got to repeat the same logic for the other bound between. Sorry. Neighbors are slamming things right now. I don't know why that is. <laughs> Bounds dot y minus edge insets bottom. That should hopefully cover it. Let's run the test now to see whether this is actually the case or if I've just made terrible assumptions and I am a sore loser. Let me look at the chat in the meantime. I am probably going to butcher this. <laughs> Hi, Cowschlesh. Sorry if I butchered your name. <laughs> okay, let's see here. 16, 236, 240. Okay, yeah, no, we definitely, we definitely boo-booed. In trying to be too fancy with this, we kind of just... <laughs> well, you know what? Idea. What if we did this? Because I think the extra calculations are throwing it off. Okay. Let her rip. Pull her up. Ugh. I need to turn off the heat. Okay, that is off. Let's see. No, we still get the same bug. Okay. My assumptions here are probably wrong. I'm just going to copy this verbatim. We'll figure out a more clean way of writing this later. Uh, new position dot x is less than edge insets dot left then new position dot x is edge insets dot left if new position dot x is greater than the bounds minus the right, then this now just becomes the bounds.x minus edge insets dot right. Now for the y, if new position dot y is less than the top, right? 
the new position there we go is edge insets top and now we just got to repeat the same logic for below if new position dot y is greater than bounds dot y minus edge insets dot bottom new position dot y is bounds dot y minus edge insets bottom okay let's try that this will probably work because of the fact that we wrote it this way but probably could do something better because essentially we just want to clamp this between a range uh no we are still getting failures that's not great 16 240 is not equal to 16 236 did I write the test wrong maybe I wrote the test wrong Fence inside sixteen four. Let me check to make sure that the insets for these tests are correct. Cause that might have something to do with it too. Right? So four eight eight four. Yeah. Uh Alright, so the first failing test we have here is test fencing bottom edge. Sixteen two thirty six. But you're getting back two forty. Oh no. Oh no, that's not right. Uh, why you do that? Alright, so we create the new position to be the point if fenced dot x is oh ha the min max solution probably would have worked then <clears throat> I was just stupid and return the point not new position how do we manage to do these things I don't know Okay, so the only one that's failing is the no transform, which I find interesting. Um, but all the other test cases are passing, so that's good. So 10 and 16 should be good. Uh, right? Hmm. If new position x. You know, I think I wrote a clamping function somewhere. It's probably in Cranberry Sprite. It's okay. I'm allowed to steal for myself. <laughs> cranberry Sprite. Uh, distance? No? Oh, you know what? This is probably a bunker. This is probably a bunker. Yes. Sources, bunker, extensions? Comparable clamped. Yeah, this is what I want. Uh, don't mind if I do. <laughs> it's 
So now we can say <laughs> new position dot x is uh, new position dot x dot clamp lower edge insets left and then bounds dot x minus edge insets dot right. And then we can do the same thing for the y. New position dot y. It sets top litter it. Yeah, at least the building and testing's a bit more. Yeah, this fifth, this weird thing is still happening. Sixteen. Uh. Ten, ten. Good job, me. <laughs> Good job, me. I completely messed that up. Okay. That that would explain it. Yeah, my my test case was written wrong. I cop I did a bad copy pasta. Mm. Yay! All green. That's exactly what I like to see. Okay. So now that that's all taken care of, um. Let's clean up the interface a little bit, and then we can commit this. Right. Um, so we did the fencing in thing, that's fine. So one of the things I want to do as well is let's make a public init here, where we have for vertical horizontal. Self dot top is vertical. VA list. What? Right is horizontal and self dot bottom is vertical. Like that. Then we can change you to be vertical uh, four horizontal eight. I'm gonna run the test just to make sure that doesn't break anything. <sighs> da, 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 da. I know, this is not the most entertaining thing to watch, because we're porting code from one thing to another. <laughs> but it, it's the important things you gotta do to make sure that these things are okay. Why am I getting buzzed right now? Oh, that's coming up. Hmm. Yeah, I got another event. That's why my calendar's screaming. Okay, 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 okay. So this is looking good. Um, yeah, I don't think we need to do anything too fancy with this. Um, this should probably go on its own thing. This is also licensed under MPL, right? Yeah. Cool. Uh, Charlotte, yes. Uh, Comparable plus clamped dot swift. Mm. 
Okay. Um, and then we're just gonna import foundation here. And then just to make sure that we're cool. <laughs> nice. Okay. Um, run it again. Yeah, th that button's not just not gonna work at this point. So we're gonna have to do it manually. Again. Ugh. Excellent. We didn't break anything. We didn't break a thing. The thingy thing. So... We'll open up merge. What's in this? Editor font size. Why is that even there? Okay, uh, so we're just going to stage all these changes and then... Uh, port over Charlotte screen APIs. I like my smelling better. So that's what we named it. <coughs> Push source branch uh, rewrite Swift. Did we? Uh, where did my files go? Come back. No, we don't want to delete it. <laughs> Did we? Well, that's great. <laughs> I just lost all the work. Because I did not pay attention when I did this. <sighs> Good job, me. Here we go again. Public struct edge insets. How did I manage to do that? Run this. I'm just more surprised that it just managed to disappear. I didn't even stash it. It just was like, oh, you wanted to create a branch? Sure. Delete.
Okay, and then we're just gonna, I'm just gonna add it here. I'm going to be fancy with this as well. Public init all float. While I'm at it, we're also going to just make this equatable. Okay. Well, that saves us from having to write the extension out. But there we are. Okay. We just got to do the same thing now here. Ugh, public far bounds vector to float public for edge insets edge insets public init bounds uh, vector to float edge insets edge insets and zero. I'm terribly sorry for those on stream that are like, what? <laughs> I just watched you write all this code. Yeah, I uh, know. I watched myself do it too. Somehow, I managed to goof this up. That's why I'm getting confused here. Ah! My comparable went boo-boo too. Go figure. That's not VS Code. This is. Okay. Let's run the tests again, just to make sure that we didn't <laughs> make this any worse. Oh, that was not what I was anticipating to do. Extra argument insets and in call. Make sure to better follow the API contract. We good. We are not good. <laughs> oh dear. Where did we go wrong? Um
We good now? No, you're being weird. Ah. Well, this was a bummer. <laughs> Listen, learn, don't do stupid things. Okay, all the tests are passing now. Let's make sure we do this the correct way this time around. Also, I think I need to change my... settings around or whatever All right don't we need a yeah I think this needs to get changed again uh, you know what and compiled fine we'll worry about it later it's not the end of the world <laughs> <laughs> though interestingly it view changes I I don't know what the difference is. It must be a file ending or something. Probably what it is. Right? Yeah. We'll figure that part out later. Um Let's try this again. Commit. Push. <laughs> Hopefully we should be doing this to the right branch. Here's the part where I get to show off the fancy bits. <laughs> Windows, hello. <laughs> Boing. Okay. Great. Camera? Thank you. Okay. So... <laughs> I'm probably just going to leave it to myself to finish parting the rest of the library because it is incredibly boring to watch me write the code. <laughs> so next week, we'll probably get back to actual regular development. Um, it is what it is. And hopefully it won't be as boring to watch. I know watching porting over C code to Swift isn't the most entertaining thing in the world. Realistically, there's probably a faster way I could have done this, but, you know, I like manually rewriting things sometimes. Uh, so anyway, if you actually like watching development content and not be blundering like a dummy, um, feel free to like, um, and tune in next week. Um, if you want to get notified when I do another stream, I hear smashing the subscribe button is a good option, as well as hitting the notify me on the particular live stream in question once I post it. Um, yeah, and I think that's where we're going to do it for today. Take care, everyone. Mm -hmm.